told by his school teachers that he was too stupid to learn anything. Winston Churchill failed sixth grade and lost every public office role he ran for before he became Prime Minister in 62. Harrison Ford, after his first small movie role, he was taken into an executive's office and told he would never make it in the movie business. Vincent Van Gogh stole only one painting in his entire life. No wonder he chopped off his ear. Beethoven was told by his music teacher that he was a hopeless composer. Abraham Lincoln lost an embarrassing eight elections, couldn't get into law school, failed in business twice, and had a nervous breakdown before he became our 16th president. The same is true with the Bible characters. Elijah was moody. Moses had temple problems. David killed somebody and had an affair. Paul tried to kill Christians. Jonah went in the opposite direction God called him to preach in. And Peter denied Jesus three times when a little girl peer pressured him. So why are you letting your failure stop you from your destiny? Fear no failure except the fear of failure. Because even though you and I might fail, God's love never fails. And that's what counts. Is it about how high we climb? It's about how high you bounce back when you hit the bottom.
So I wanted to give you the uh, Bible verse that inspired this song. Uh, Zach Williams was in a Christian band and was looking, felt like he needed to go in a different direction. And his wife suggested to him to go to a women's prison and play some of his songs. And he just let God uh, play that part in his life and showing him words. And after that, he had about 20 uh, women come to Jesus right there on the spot. He's like, wow, this is what I need to do. I need to leave my band and go on a solo career. And he came up with this song. It's based on Acts 16, 25 through 30. He says, picture this. It's midnight in the darkness of their cell. Paul and Silas, after surviving the severe beating, aren't moaning and groaning. They are praying and singing hymns to God. The prisoners in adjoining cells are wide awake, listening to them pray and sing. Suddenly the ground begins to shake and the prison foundations begin to crack. You hear the sound of jangling chains and the squeak of cell doors open. Every prisoner realizes that his chains have come unfastened. The jailer wakes up and runs into the jail. His heart sinks as he sees the doors have all swung open. He is sure his prisoners have escaped, and he knows this will mean death for him, so he pulls out his sword to commit suicide. At that moment, Paul sees what is happening and shouts out at the top of his lungs, Wait, man, don't harm yourself. We're all here. None of us has escaped. The jailer sends his assistants to get some torches and rushes into the cell with Paul and Silas. He falls on his knees before them, trembling. Then he brings them outside. The jailer says, Gentlemen, please tell me what, I, what must I do to be liberated. So this is Chain Breaker. Uh, yeah, I think you'll get the gist of it. The chorus goes three or four times, and yeah, it's not repetitive. So let's do this. You've been walking the same old road. Hey! 
morning as we are preparing for announcements. I want to welcome everybody to today's worship service. Make sure that you sign the registration pads and pass them on down. And then if you see a fresh face that you do not know, make sure you go and introduce yourselves later on in the service. Um, in the way of announcements, I want to stress the Royals game. We do have a few that would like to go see the Royals. If you are interested and if you have not told us yet, please do so today so we can get tickets for you this week. Thank you. Okay. All the few bald head wonders are past the best of churches around. We have uh, those mission pennies this month. They're going to the Debbie's Fund, which you know, at school.
are the three types of time? Three types of time. There's three of them. Do you know? The first one is, I'm going to give you a hint. The first one is past. Yes, past, present, and future. Okay, now, I hope everybody gets this next question. So in past, present, and future, what is the one person that is involved in all three at all times. God, they got it right! Yes! We got some very smart people up here. You guys are awesome. Yes, God is involved in our past. So everything that you've done in the past, God was there with you. God is here with you today and you know, in the next few moments, Days. You God was here before us in our way past, even before we were born. God has always been here, and God is always going to be here with us. So God will be here tomorrow with each and every one of you. That is a promise we all have. Sorry. Will you all bow your heads and say this prayer with me? Almighty God, thank you for being in our past, being with us today in our present, and thank you for being part of our future. Amen. Thank you all. See you next week. We have decided that Terry Sue can no longer be, be stumped. We can't stump her. So if you notice the change, the bulletin is called Congregation Choice. <laughs> Anybody have a favorite hymn they'd like to sing to me? 707. I think Don, the Dr. Reynolds over there looks at the hymnal before the church. It's pretty much true.
next song can be found in the hymnal at 548. But for you, those of you that can read music, we're not doing it by this tune, we're doing it out of the old hymnal. But you have the words and you can listen to the organ and maybe not be so much. So 548 in your hymnal. <laughs> and 
now the waiting is getting him up and getting him going. Let's offer our time. 
We pray that they will be a blessing unto your sight and used to the glory of your will. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture lesson today. As you sit down, I'll turn it to Ephesians. We're looking at chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. I don't know if it's the same for uh, other Sunday school classes, but most of the time when the preacher goes over and has a certain sermon, it kind of like just goes right into what we're doing in Sunday school class. And uh, we've been talking about the vine and how us as Gentiles were grafted into the vine to become one people part of one body, and uh, this is what exactly what it's talking about here, only that not in the vine, but as the foundation is sort of the building. So Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access to one spirit, to the Father, so that you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens, saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, but Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God. As we prepare this week, I would ask if somebody would like to pray over the message this day, I would invite you to just kind of stand where you are and offer up a prayer. Do I have a volunteer? Therefore, remember that at one time you, 
Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you are at this time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. You see, the visions at one time, the Gentiles had no God, no real past, no present, and no future. They, in fact, had no hope. You see, to be without God is to be without hope. But, 1 Thessalonians 4.13, we do not want anyone to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that she may not grieve as others do that have no hope. You see, we all have hope because of the work of Christ through reconciliation. The Gentiles of the day, those without hope, had fabricated many gods to worship. They thought they had hope. They were trying to make for themselves hope. They tried to make for themselves a past, present, and future. However, it was not real. And Paul was pointing that out, that our true hope comes alone through Christ. If we are to be consistent witnesses for Christ, it's important that we remember where we truly come from. And the purpose of remembering is through thanksgiving and service. We are to go forth and show through our works, through our word, through our deeds, our hope. We are to let that show through for others through us. Now, today, things have changed. No longer can Jews shun the Gentiles, and no longer are Gentiles kept away from Christ. Christ has taken away all things that divide people, and he has brought us all together. Gentiles have been brought into where the Jews are. They are now experiencing the family relationship with God as Father. And we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Paul, in his writing, uses two interesting phrases. First, he says, you who once were far off have been brought near. And secondly, broken down in his fresh and dividing walls of hostility. There was so much hostility back then. They were at war with each other. But Christ means for all things to come together, to work together, to reconcile together, and to be one. The blood of Christ has brought us near in his flesh and has broken down the dividing wall. And both of these phrases refer in some ways to the Jewish temple in Jerusalem during the time of Herod. And that temple was the court of the Gentiles. And that area of the temple was the furthest back. This was a place where they could go and worship. Farthest away from the holies of holies. But now that has been broken down. And they can come forth and come near to God. Because God wants all of us to be near to Him. In Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse 19. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, 
built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are all being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Throughout history, there have been great and mighty empires. But as with anything that man makes, they come and they go. But Jesus, on the other hand, is building a kingdom in which will endure for eternity. It will endure forever. And every person who is converted into the body of Christ becomes a brick in this temple. Now I want you to look forth up here on the altar. I try to build the best of my artistic abilities, which are far to none, a temple. And as you can see, each piece is laid upon each other. And without a foundation of blocks, it would just fall and crumble over. I want you to also notice that some of these are shaped a little bit differently. Just like you and me, all of us are shaped a little bit differently. I won't say any more there. Some of us might even have some holes. If we have a strong foundation as our core, and if we have Christ, as our cornerstone, we can build higher and higher and higher. And as God being our cornerstone, and as each and every one of us helping bring our blocks together and fill it with mortar of peace, love, joy, happiness, the word of God, then we can be strengthened together and built into something even more beautiful. As you can see, if I would have had more time, I could have built something like that. Possibly not. And, you know, <laughs> you sort of got the point. Um, interesting. We are built into something beautiful. The more blocks, the more bricks, the more of us comes together. We are the body of Christ, and we are called to all come together to continue to build that kingdom, bringing everything that we have. Because of Jesus, we all have this foundation that was laid by the apostles and the prophets. This building is not finished yet. We are to continue to build on it. And because of Jesus, we have a past built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, a present we are fought fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. That is today. Each and every one of you are a present brick of the kingdom of God. And we have a future which we will all build on and bring others into as a dwelling place with God. We have a God. As Jeremiah 31 verse 33 says, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel for these days, declared the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people.
We are God's people. So this day forward, may the peace and the hope of God fill you with joy so that the power of the Holy Spirit may abound in hope through you. And may we all be strengthened as God's kingdom building his everlasting temple of peace. Amen. In closing, I invite you all to stand and listen together. O Church of God United, page number 547.